Hey guys and welcome to another tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about scope. Now you probably already know quite a bit about scope from the previous tutorial videos, uh, but I haven't actually made a video dedicated to scope, so I would like to do that before we actually move on to the higher level uh, concepts. You definitely need to have a, a firm grasp of scope. So here we have a very simple program. We have a global variable int cat. Now remember globals are typically bad, but for the sake of uh, this tutorial I'm using global variables. And then we have our main function, and main function immediately sets that global variable cat to 5 and prints it to the screen with a cout function. And then it calls a print cat function, which does the same thing, prints it to the screen. So it's literally just calling cout cat end l, cout cat end l, and then this pauses it as usual. So let's go ahead and run it and see what we get. We should get 5, 5, unless we have build errors. Print cat not found because I didn't do a forward declaration. Void print cat. Like that. So now let's run it. So here we get 5.5. Five. Obviously, I, did, I probably didn't need to run that for you to know that that would happen. Now, what is going to happen, however, if I create a new cat variable in here, int cat equals 9 or something like that? What are we going to get printed to the screen? Are we going to get 5.5 uh, five again, or are we going to get something else? So if I run it, what you're going to see is we get 5.10. Now the reason that happened is because when we made this int cat in here, this cat equals 5 no longer set the global cat variable to 5, it set this cat variable to 5. So we see out at a 5 here, and then when we called print cat down here, whenever it says see out cat, the only cat it knows about is the global int cat. The way scope works is that when you declare a variable it is able to be used by anything inside of its scope. Uh, and for global variables, that means anything below it in the file or in other files that include it. Uh, for uh, functions, it means anything else in the function that is below it. Uh, and what scope is, is it's basically just the lifetime of your variable. So if we create this int cat here, it's going to get allocated on the stack, and then it's going to get popped off at the end of the main function. It's going to be gone. It's not going to be usable anymore by anything else, so it wouldn't make sense for us to be able to uh, call cat outside of this function. So if we didn't have this global int cat here, even if we declare cat in main, there is no cat uh, that is in the scope of print cat, because this cat has the scope right here that I'm highlighting. Now, we can actually create artificial scope, too. What I can do is I can... Uh, put a little curly brace there and a little curly brace here and now cat has its own inner scope here and What's going to happen is we're going to be printing out 5 5 again because this cat equals 5 is not going to set this cat equal to a 5 It's going to set this cat equal to a 5 because the scope of cat is within its enclosing curly braces So it is valid for only this part right here. However, the global variable cat is valid for all of this. Okay, so let's go ahead and run it and I'll prove to you that you can do that. There we go, we get 5-5. Five, five. If you have, you can you can use this to like uh, call a destructor for some, some class or something. Like if you wanted to have a class that uh, is created and then deleted really quickly, uh, or is created, does something, and then is deleted rather than waiting for it to delete at the end of the function, you could put your class in here. It's kind of a nifty little trick, but I haven't really used it a whole lot. So let's get rid of that. Now what if we, so let's say we do have an int cat here, int cat equals 9. What if we do want to print out a 5, 5 and have this int cat variable? Well right now we're going to get 5, 10 because we're not modifying the global cat. Well, what we can do is use what's called the scope resolution operator. So right now C++ is going to take the variable name that is closest to us in scope. So this int cat is inside our main function, right? It's right next to where we're using it here. So it's the closest to us. So this is going to be the one we use. However, we can force it to use one that exists somewhere else because this cat variable isn't overriding this one. It's just being used by default. If we use the scope resolution operator, and in this case, I believe it's called the unary scope resolution operator, this will set the global cat to five. And this is going to see out a 9 now because it's going to see out this local cat that was never set to a 5. So we should print out a 9, and then this see out cat should print out a 5 because we set the global cat to 5. Let's go ahead and run that. There we go. We get 9, 5. And if we wanted to, we could see out the global one, and then we would get 5, 5. And there we go, 5, 5. 
So that is the unary scope of uh, the unary scope resolution operator. Now there is also just a normal scope resolution operator, which looks exactly the same, but it's used a little differently. Uh, the only time you really use this operator is if you're referring to global variables. Let's say we have a ninja class. Okay, so we're making a ninja here. Let me delete all this cat stuff. We don't need cat anymore. We understand about globals. Goodbye and goodbye and goodbye. All right, so let's make ourselves a ninja. So ninja, ninja, and I'm going to use the constructor here to give him a health and a name. So his health is going to be 100.0f, and his name is going to be Christian. Okay, and what we're going to do now is just get the name and get the health and see what we get. So let's do uh, C out get health. And then we'll do get name. Really basic stuff. We know what's going to get printed here. We're going to get a 100, and then we're going to get Christian. Oh, well, duh. We have to say ninja. Dot get name and health. There we go. So let's run it. And we get 100 Christian. Of course, that's what we would expect. However, uh, the reason this worked is... So we have these health and name variables being passed into the constructor, and they are a different name than these uh, uh, private variables here. Because whenever we write private variables, we've been doing the underscore to denote it. But you might come across a code base, because you know, you're not only going to be reading code that you write, you might find some code that doesn't do that. So we don't have that little underscore there. So now what's happening here is we're getting health equals health, name equals name, and it's not going to be setting our, our private health to the parameter health, it's going to be setting the parameter health to itself and the name to itself. So now if we run it, we're going to get uninitialized variables. So if I zoom in here, you just get big negative number and the string is, I guess, just the empty string or something. So how can we fix this issue? Now, one thing you could do that's pretty simple is you could just change the variable names here. So we could change this to like capital H and capital N and do it like that, but if you didn't want to do that, what you could instead do is use the scope resolution operator. Because the issue here is this health, vari or this health variable right here, it is in tighter scope than this health variable out here. This health variable is at the class scope, whereas this one is at the function scope, meaning it's right next to this uh, reference to it. So whenever our uh, C++ program is like, okay, which health variable should I use, this one or this one, it's going to use this one because it's right next to it. It's right in its scope. So what we can do is say, hey, don't use that one. Use uh, ninja scope resolution operator health, just like that. So now this is telling us, or this is telling the program that we want to use the health that is defined in the ninja class, which happens to be our private variable health. So now when we run it, it's going to work properly again. So we get 100 Christian. Now you've seen this used like this before whenever we make uh, classes in another file. Uh, so like, for, for instance, if this ninja was in a header file, remember when we want to make uh, our functions, say we were implementing uh, get health uh, in a separate file, we would be writing it as float uh, ninja colon colon get health. And the reason we have to do that is because we have to tell the uh, compiler that this get health function is in the scope of ninja. It belongs to the ninja class. So I hope you understand now kind of what scope uh, is and you know the the scope that your variables will have and how to resolve uh, scope conflicts. Uh, but typically, you really shouldn't have to use this. Uh, I usually go with just renaming the variable, but you know you have that option now. Thanks for watching. There's only a few more uh, concepts I want to get through before we actually go on to graphics, so it should be just a few more videos. Thanks, guys.